in a lunar eclipse, the moon passes into the shadow of the Earth. This one is special. The full moon appears brighter and bigger because it's closer to Earth than any other time in its orbit. So we'll go from being very bright to turning this beautiful red color, the effect of the sunrises and sunsets of the Earth being projected onto the lunar surface. The last time the supermoon and lunar eclipse coincided was in 1982. So it's these, these eclipses that give us a really, really unique opportunity to, to make specific measurements uh, about the surface that we just can't do uh, at any other time. NASA has had its eye on the moon for a long time, beginning with the Apollo program in the 1960s. In more recent years, the space agency has collected data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter that flies as low as 20 kilometers above the moon's surface. We're seeing new impact craters that have formed in the six years that we've been there. We're seeing the evidence of, of migrating water across the surface. Not a lot of water, a small amount of water, but still the, the view that the moon was a, a static, unchanging place is now completely different. Some moon rocks date back four and a half billion years to the earliest history of our solar system. When we look at the moon, we're really looking into the, the deep history of the Earth as well. And, and I think from that, we can learn a lot about how our planet has changed and how all planets have changed over time. So in order to understand what was happening just after the planets formed, studying the surface of the moon is one of the, the most uh, interesting and best places to do that. The supermoon eclipse will be visible Sunday after sunset in North America and all of South America, and before dawn on Monday in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Your next opportunity won't be until 2033. Roseanne Skirbel, VOA News, Washington.